how to express a composite number as a product of prime factors. How to express a composite number as a product of prime factors. There are some terms that I've used here, composite number and prime factors or prime numbers. What are they? In yesterday's lesson, I looked at the concept of what are factors of a number, what is a prime number, and what is a composite number. You can review that lecture, but I want to recap the main points. By factors of a number, we mean those numbers which divide that number without a remainder. And then we saw that there are some numbers with uh, only two factors. Only two factors. And uh, one of these factors is one. The other one is itself. A number such as two can only have two factors. One and two. That is one and itself. A number such as three can only have two factors. One and three. But a number like four has three factors. One, two, and itself, which is four. So a number with more than two factors is referred to as a composite number, while a number with only two factors is referred to as a prime number. One is not a prime number because it has got only one factor. So this is what we looked at yesterday. In today's uh, lesson, we want, now want to express that composite number as a product of the prime factors. Let me just use an example here just to illustrate what I'm talking about. You see, if you get 12, you can express it as a product of two numbers. 2 times 6. So, when you multiply 2 times 6, you get 12. And these are factors of 12 because if you divide 12 by 2, you're going to get 6 and there is no remainder. Again, if you divide 12 by 6, you will get 2 and again, there is no remainder. So, 2 and 6 are factors of 12. But when you look at 2, 2 is a prime number. But 6 is not a prime number. Because if I get 6, um, I can do 6 like this. I can say I can multiply 2 times 3. Or I can say 1 times 6. And therefore, the products of... I mean, the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and itself. So you can say that 6 is not a composite number because it got more than two factors. It's not a composite number. So I've got to break it down further. So 12 has not been expressed as a product of prime factors here because this 6 is still a composite number. So what are we going to do? We get 12. We're going to get 12. We divide it by 2. We get 6. And then we go ahead and divide 6 by 2. We get 2 times 3. And then finally, 3 is expressed as itself times 1. These are the prime factors of 12. So we're going to say 12 will be 1, but 1 is not a prime number. So we are going to, to, to put it aside. So we are going to start with the smallest, which is 2. I multiply by another 2 to get 4. I multiply by, by 3 in order to get 12. So, when we have two numbers repeated like this, what we do, because I've repeated them twice or two times, 
I'll do 2 raised to power 2 and then times 3. Here I have written the number 12 which is a composite number as a product of prime factors. These are prime factors. 3 is a prime factor, 2 is a prime factor and that is what we meant by this particular expression here. Now let's look at some examples in your exercise. In exercise 2.1 you've got uh, several examples there. Let's start with the with the first one, 30. We want to express 30 as a product of its prime factors. So again we start with 30 there. We divide it by 2. It's possible to divide it by 2 so that we get 15. We got 15 and see what two numbers can we multiply together to get 15. And I can see I can use 3. I multiply it by 5. How about 5? Can it be broken down any further? No. It's a prime number. So here I get 5 times 1. So 30 can be expressed as a product of prime factors by multiplying 2 times 3 times 5. And I'm done with that. That is A. Let's look at B, which is 40. How about 40? How do I get 40? Let's see. If I have 40 here, can divide 40 by 2, I get 20. Divide 20 by 2, I get 10. Uh, which numbers can I multiply together to get 10? One of them is 2. The other one is 5. And finally here, 5 cannot be broken down any further. So it is 5 times 1. Again, the... 40 expressed as a product of prime factors will be 2 times 2 times another 2 times 5. And we say when we get a prime number multiplied by itself uh, several times, we just need to write it once. That prime number, how many times do we multiply uh, by itself. We multiply by itself 3 times 1, 2, 3 and here we are going to get to put 3 and it is read as 2 raised to power 3 or raised to 3 and then times 5. Again I have expressed 40 as a product of its prime factors. Let's look at the next example. And the number is 64. 64. So how do I break down 64? Uh, let me use this uh, space here. 64. Can I break it down twice? 2 times 32. 2 times 16. Observe that I'm always starting with the simplest with the smallest prime number with the smallest prime number i've got to test is that number divisible by 2 if it is not like for example 15 is not divisible by 2 i go to the next number i ask myself is it divisible by 3 because 3 is the next large prime factor or prime number after 2 and then i go on i ask myself again of course, if initially the number is not divisible by 2, there is no way 2 can appear after this. We are going to look at the divisibility test so that we are able to know how do you know that a certain number is divisible by 2, by 3, and so forth. But meanwhile, uh, let's go on here and we are going to see that 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is 2 
times 4. And of course, 4 is 2 times 2. And of course, lastly, we've got 2 times 1. I'm running short of space there, but you can see the point. So how many times do I multiply 2 by itself? I multiply it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this one, written as a product of its prime factors, will be 2 raised to power 6. Like that. Let's go on. We've got D. In part D, we've got 81. 81. Now, 81, let me go to the next page there. So I have 81. Want to see 81. Now, is 81 divisible by, let me write properly here. Don't want to put arrows. Is it divisible by 2? Of course not. We are going to learn that if a number is divisible by 2, then the last digit here is supposed to be either 0 or an even number. What are even numbers? Even numbers are numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then numbers which comprise whose last digit is uh, 2, 4, or 0. Okay, so I can have 10 there. So long as the last digit is 0 or even, it is either 0 or even, that number is divisible by 2. When, and that is how I'm able to determine very quickly that a number is divisible by 2. I can obviously see that this number is not divisible by 2. So I go to the next number, which is number 3. When we learn about the divisibility test, we will be able to see that a number is divisible by 2 if you add it its digits. For example, if you add 8 plus 1, you get 9 then you will know that a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. For example, 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3. And that is how I know 81 is divisible by 3. Let's retrace back our steps here and we see what we did. How did I know that 15 is divisible by, by 3? Of course, by practice, you will have met all these numbers. When we practice with the numbers, you will know which numbers are divisible by 3 and which are divisible by 2. At least you will know through practice. But now I'm giving you a method that you can use to know that a number is divisible by, by 3. If you add 5 and 1, you get 6. 6 divided by 3, you get 2. So I know that that number 15 is divisible by 3. That is how I know that. So let's continue. So since I know that 81 is divisible by 3, I'm going to divide 81 by 3 and I get 27. This number, is, this, is it divisible by 3? If I add 2 and 7, I'm going to get 9. 9 is divisible by 3. So obviously, I know that I must have 3 as a first digit there and then I know 3 goes into 27 9 times. So I know it is divisible by 3. So, and 9 definitely is divisible by 3. And I get 3 here. And finally, the last digit here, which is a 3 times 1. And you can see 81 as a product of its prime factors. I'm going to get 3. And that 3 is raised to power 4. Yeah, it is raised to power 4. So we are learning some things here. We have seen that if a number is divisible by 2, then the last digit is either 0 or an even number. What are even numbers? 
even numbers are numbers such as uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And then any other number with those uh, digits as the last digit is even. So, let's continue. Um, let's look at part E of number 1. E, we have 169. 169. Let's see. 169. We ask ourselves, is it divisible by 2? Of course not. You can see that the last digit is not even, so it is not divisible by 2. So you go to the next prime factor or prime number, which is 3. Is it divisible by 3? It's quite a big number, so I need to add these numbers. Uh, 1 plus 6, I get 7. 7 plus 9, I get 16. 16 is not divisible by 3, so I leave it out. How about 4? Of course, it's not divisible by 4 because 4 is a multiple of 2. And therefore, if it was not divisible by 2, it can probably it's not divisible by 4. So I rule that one out. How about 6? 6 comes from 3. And if it's not divisible by 3, probably it's not divisible by 6. And so is 8. So when I look at this number, it appears as if it cannot be divided by 2. And you can even test with a calculator. You can get a calculator. Try to divide it by 2. You will find that it gives you 0.5. So it, it is not, there is a remainder when you try to divide it by 2. You try to divide it by 4, there will be a remainder. You try to divide it by 6, there will be a remainder. How about 8? there will be a remainder and we can see that the other numbers are going to just be repetitions of these digits here because we can test for 12 we can te test for 14 we can go on like that and we can see that the only number which is which divides 169 is 169 itself or 1 so this number is 1 times 169 and you can see that the instructions are quite clear here express a composite number as a product of prime factors one is not a prime factor so 169 cannot be broken down any further so it remains as 169 and that is how you would work out number one of that exercise. I'd like you to work out uh, number two, three, four, and five. And as you go on, you'll find that the digits become bigger and bigger and bigger. Probably, let me start you off by working out 2a. So in question number 2a, so, in question number 2a, we have 256. 256. Let's see. The last digit over here is even. So, is it divisible by 2? Yes, it is divisible by 2. So, I'll write 256 here. And then I say, this number is 2 times what number? This is 1. This is 2. This is uh, 8, 128. Is 128 divisible by 2? Yes, the last digit is even, so it is divisible by 2. I put a 2 here and I get 60, 60, 64. 64. And remember, if you are not able to divide. Uh, those numbers uh, mentally you can use a calculator although in the beginning I'd like to discourage you from using a calculator because uh, it makes even the simplest problem you cannot work it out you know offhead so is this one divisible by 2 yes of course it is and I get 
uh, 32 here and I can see this one is a repetition of the number 64 where we express number 64 as I think it was 2 raised to power 6 2 raised to power 6 so I can use that knowledge and say that from here I'm going to have uh, 2 times 2 that is this times this times 64 but I know that uh, 64 is 2 raised to power 5 was it raised to power 5 or power 6 no it was power 6 so let me make that correction it is raised to power 6 so this one is going to be equal to 2 raised to power 2 times 2 raised to power 6 this one will be 2 raised to 2 plus 6 you add their powers so long as the this number is the same 2 so long as it is the same so you are going to say 2 raised to power 8 and that is how you get 256 so hopefully this one is going to assist you let me look at another example a number like 430 that is a b so question 2 b we have 430 as a product of its prime factors so when i look at 430 i can see that the last digit is zero and that fulfills the condition for the divisibility test 430 is divisible by 2 because the last digit is 0 so I'm going to get 2 4 and then I'm going to get 1 and then I'm going to get 15 215 let's see is this number divisible by 2 no it's not because the last digit is not even it's an odd number so it's not divisible by 2 is it divisible by 3 let's find out 2 plus 1 I get uh, 3 plus 5 I get 8 is 8 divisible by 3 no it is not so 3 is out 4 is not because 4 um, follows comes from 2 which is not so 4 definitely is not how about 5 yes 5 this number is divisible by 5 how do you know that a number is divisible by 5 you will know that a number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is 5 or 0 you will know that a number is divisible by 5 is the last digit is 5 or 0 and you can see here the digit is 5 so you write 5 there you divide this number by 5 you're going to get 4 and then you are going to get I think 43 43 because 5 goes into 20 4 times so you have 20 there uh, 21 minus 20 you get 1 you drop 5 there you get 15 and 5 goes into 15 3 times now let's see 43 divisible by 2 of course not 3 of course not if this number was not divisible by 3 there is no way this one can be divisible by 3 so 3 is definitely out divisible by 4 of course not 5 no let's see 6 it would be if it was 42 but now it is 43 so it's not divisible by 3 7 of course not I can't think of any number I would multiply it with to give me I would multiply 7 with to give me 43 so 7 is out 8 is out because of 4 8 comes from 4 and 4 if 4 is not cannot divide that digit then definitely 8 is not how about 9 9 is out so it appears as if the only number which multiplies 43 is 43 uh, can divide 43 comfortably is 43 itself 
when you divide 43 by 43 you get 1 so the prime factors of 430 is 2 times 5 sorry there or to write 5 and then we've got 40 you see we are avoiding writing 1 because 1 remember what is a prime number a prime number is a number with the two factors 1 and itself two factors but 1 has got only one factor itself so that is how so I'd like you to attempt the rest of that exercise so that in the next lesson um, we are now going to look at the divisibility test uh, throughout. So in this lesson, we were able to express a composite number. Remember what a composite number is. It is a number with more than two factors. What are factors? Factors are those numbers which divide a given factor exactly without a remainder. So there are two types of factors. Um, prime factors and uh, composite factors or composite numbers. What is a, a prime number? Prime number is a number with only two factors. One and the other one is itself. And I've given you several examples. Uh, remember, if you, if you want to understand mathematics, it's about repetition. You've got to do a lot of repetition. You don't just do one example and you think that you have understood that particular concept. You've got to do as many examples as possible. That is why you see that in any maths exercise, the exercises given at the end, they are very many. And that one is intentional. It is to make sure that you practice. You repeat that particular concept as many times as possible so that it can get into your mind properly. Because these are just numbers. Mathematics, we are just dealing with numbers. So, remember what a factor is, what a prime number is, what a composite number is, and remember one is not a prime number. And then, when we are on composite numbers, now we want to express any composite number as a product of prime factors, which means we want to eliminate one. One is not involved there because it's not a prime number. One is not a prime number. So, and I've been able to show you a few examples there. So go right ahead, try to finish that exercise. If you get any kind of uh, uh, questions, and by the way, the exercise is on page 14 of your course book. The course book I'm using is the third edition of Secondary Mathematics Students Book 1, third edition, page 11, you will find that exercise. If there is a number which you cannot be able to work out, especially when the numbers become bigger and bigger, then probably that problem will be solved in the next um, lesson where I will teach you the divisibility test for you to know where, how do I know that a given number is divisible by this number. Just by looking at the number and doing a few things here and there, you can be able to tell is it divisible by 2? Of course, that one we have covered. Is it divisible by 3? That one we have also covered. Is it divisible by 5? We have covered that. So in the divisibility test, I'm going to look at the other uh, tests that we uh, carry out for divisibility test by 4, for divisibility test by 5. Of course, we have done uh, that. And then we look at the exercises. So see you in the next lesson.